Hello, I'm Andrew Travers, and I'm recording this scale project as a favor to a colleague, Kristen Ortman. So, for Mrs. Ortman's students especially, this one's for you. I'm going to start by playing the C scale, two octaves. First, the lower octave. Now, the middle octave. Notice the pattern change between them, the middle octave and the lower octave. Two octave C scale, separate bows. C major two octave, slurs, slurring two. C major scale, two octaves, slurring four. G major scale, same left hand pattern to start. Middle octave. Shift, fourth position. the shift in the middle octave. We all need practice. Variations of that practice, slurring the shift. practicing shifts, you may enunciate the shift so that you hear the travel. I'm shifting on a classical style, which is the old finger and arriving on the new finger, or the old finger and arriving on the new finger. Romantic style would be the opposite. exactly the style for playing a scale though. Good luck with those. G scale, two octaves, separate bows. <laughs> G major scale, two octaves, slurring two. G major scale, two octaves, slurring four. The D major scale begins with an extension. And extensions are a bigger space between one and two. Make sure the thumb always matches with the middle finger. So the extension shape begins like so. Our first finger's anchor. D 
D major scale, lower octave. challenge. To increase your leverage, bring your elbow to bear and bring the pinky finger into a curled and strong position. This will allow you to gauge your, engage your flow of power from your back through your shoulder, your elbow, and into your fingertip. If the pinky finger proves weak at first, try another finger the same pitch for good tone. And then move to your weaker fingers until you can try playing on a fourth finger. I also recommend playing hot cross bones. Make it sound just like you know it should with that fourth finger's F sharp extension. D major scale, two octaves, separate bows. second finger on the A string. There are two options for finger. The first is to shift to fourth position from fourth finger D. Here. And then shift to first finger A for the last three notes of the scale. A to G. E to D. Both shifts are a whole step. Shift, whole step. Shift, whole step. The thumb can also come around depending on the length of your thumb and the size of your hand for comfort. If it needs to come up here, that's fine too. When putting the thumb across the strings, make sure it's covering at least two strings about an inch away from the first finger. finger combination is this. Starting on second finger, shifting first finger, third finger, half step shift to first finger, second finger, then shifting to A. You'll notice this has one extra shift in the other finger pattern. The advantage of this finger pattern is that it's the same finger pattern that most other third octave scales have. So it's good to learn both. One 
the challenge of this finger pattern is that there's a whole step shift and then a half step shift. C to D, whole step. E to F, half step. G to A, whole step. There's also a finger change between a 1-3 and a 1-2. Again, if your hand is small, a 1-3 may feel more comfortable than a 1-2 here. Most hands feel fairly comfortable with 1-2-3 on the last three notes, A, B, C. C major scale, three octaves, separate bows. you into thumb position on this scale very easily. Find the harmonic A with thumb. So there's an alternative option for the third octave. Now for the top octave of the G scale. Our top note is here. And we're going to treble, whole step shift to A, half step to C, whole step to E, 
F sharp, G. Many players will feel the need to move fingers out of the way of the other to maintain pitch accuracy. Because the spaces get much smaller, the higher up we play on our cello. That is, towards the bridge. Higher in pitch. So that shift is G to A whole step, B to C half step, D to E whole step, F sharp, half step to G. Bit of a soft shoe there with the third and second finger. Watch out for squeaks. G major scale, three octaves, separate bows. G major scale, three octaves, slurring two. G major scale, three octaves, slurring four. get comfortable playing up high is to pr practice octaves. C to C. Same finger shift sometimes. Changing finger, two to one. Challenge to do. And then D to D. as you need to. You can also have a drone going in the background so that your target is more clear. And then that high one there. I also like going between the scales. C to G. G to C. C to G again. Especially C and G. They are ringing tones on our cello. So is the D. Good luck with your scale practice.